Hello friends of the T-Woods, Shilil Regun back with another T-Woods development episode. Uh, today I want to show you server-side configurations. Um, we can also look at client-side configurations. Um, they are very similar. Um, yeah, let's let's do both. Um, so we are looking at T-Woods uh, server and client-side uh, configuration variables. Um, those are similar to client and server commands. They can behave in a similar way, but they're still different somewhat, okay? Um, but before we get started, uh, I quickly want to note something on VS Code. Uh, usually I open the SRC directory, but I was told by a fangirl uh, <clears throat> that I should probably open the current directory. So the whole um, T-Words uh, folder containing the source and the CMake lists and everything. Um, so, and also I did not mention extensions. So if you go on the, I should probably zoom in here. If you go on the left and I should probably zoom in here as well. If you go on the left hand side to extensions or press control shift X, um, you can see here the extension market and I highly recommend you typing in C++ and then installing the first um, the first extension that pops up here, uh, official one by Microsoft. As you know, the VS Code tool is also developed by Microsoft, so this is somewhat the official go-to C++ uh, extension, as you can see, 10 million downloads. And I also recommend you installing CMake, uh, the language support if you want to um, edit the CMake lists uh, file, and also the CMake tools. Um, those can help you uh, building uh, T-Words and so on. So um, yeah, let's quickly install all of this. And probably if the language support didn't work um, prior to this video and you d could not click on uh, functions, that might be the issue. And as you can see now it builds here similar to Visual Studio um, on Windows. Um, you should probably run Control Shift P for the um, like if you remember Control P for opening files and there's also Control Shift P for the um, VS Code console so to say so you can reset Zoom for example Zoom commands like that and you can um, control your plugins here your extensions and we want to type in CMake and then a configure and then it probably oh the last time it wanted me to select a compiler you should select one of those compilers over there and then you want to run cmake build and then it should um build yeah it already is built for me so that's fine it should also build then on startup um okay so just this quick note on vs code um i i forgot that one okay so um now we have a little bit more files here. Um, normally we just open the SSC folder in the previous episodes, but it's better style to open the whole repository as I was told. Okay, so um, configurations. Um, yeah, let's quickly start the server. So. Oh yeah, and I probably shouldn't build from the command line anymore. You can press um, if the CMake uh, tool is integrated well, you can just press F7 and um, it will build for you. And now I can just run it here. Let's see how that goes. I never tested it, I just set it up right now. And the server is running, that's good. And then <coughs> connect to the server real quick. Oh, I should probably start my server with a admin password. Um, Not the client, but the server. Okay. So if we connect to the server now, so we can see, um, yeah, we have our stats command, which is a command, but there are also things like, uh, yeah, like the um, sv. Wait, where am I? The sv underscore recon password. This is not a command. This is a configuration. And um, 
those can be accessed from the admin console similar to uh, to commands so I can also see the password here it's empty oh it's the mod password uh, the normal password is recon as we uh, set it and we can also change it here and then if we log out and if we log in what what was the new value I chose one two three yeah so um, it's uh, a new password now um, yeah, you probably know those, especially from the client side, you have uh, things like your player um, name, oh, there's no fuzzy search here, name, how's it called, player underscore name, so player underscore name. Um, yeah, so usually those are prefix on the client side with CL underscore, player name is, uh, yeah, somewhat of a, uh, yeah, it's, it's not following the, the T-Word style, it's somewhat of an exception. Um, but it's still a configuration variable. Boy, that's confusing. But uh, the, the configuration, you can detect configuration values by, um, if you would just enter those in, like, um, usually you can detect them if they are on the client side by uh, the CL underscore prefix and on the server side with SV underscore for server and client. And um, on the client side, if we go and set um, and execute a a configuration um, and just launch the the configuration command, so to say, it will give us back the value. And if you provide a value, um, it um, it changes it. Okay, so. Um, that's different than commands because commands, if you just execute commands um, like exit, for example, on the client side, it's just one thing that gets executed and does something and then it's done and it executes code directly. And configuration variables just hold a value usually. You can also um, have a code executed on the change of the configuration variable, but usually those are just values and then um, depending on those configurations, uh, things behave differently. So um, those configuration variables are defined in two places and nobody knows which place means what and what they actually, what's the difference. But there is config underscore variables dot h in source engine shared. And um, here we have those configuration variables. And um, there is this macro. Macro is like some C++ magic that um, transforms your code, so to say. So um, it creates code for us. And um, yeah, we have all these configuration variables and they are mixed um, client and server variables in here just to confuse us, uh, us even more. Oh, there's even a to do remove this uh, variables because this is the other file. Uh, game variables, so if you go to variables, uh, source game variables, there's a, uh, another file which is um, kind of similar. And this one also, does it hold server variables? No, doesn't? Oh yeah, it does, okay. So both of them hold server and client variables. Um, what I personally did um, this is nothing you should follow. Um, maybe, as you can see, here's a to do. Maybe in the future, if you're watching this video, the variables dot uh, h is not existent anymore. Um, but what I usually do is if I do something on the client side, I do it in variables dot h. If I do something on the server side, I do it in the config underscore variables dot h. But this is just some personal taste, okay? Um, you can put in um, both. Uh, server and client in both files. Um, as you can see here, um, let's go through the format real quick. We have the um, name for the uh, that is used in the code. So if you want to access the player name um, configuration variable in the code, you use player name in upper camel case. Oh, uh, upper camel case being like a naming convention for variables. Upper camel case opposed to like lower um, lower camel case being the first letter lower case and there's also snake case and uh, and so on um, okay so um, the 
And the second argument is the command that you type in in-game. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, this is what we just typed in in the client console, a lower snake case, player underscore name. And as you can see, we have here the type str stands for string. So um, we have the length of the string here. So the string can be at most uh, 16 characters. And then we have the default value being nameless t. And then we have the flags uh, config cfg stands for config uh, flag save. Um, this persists this config um, to your configuration file. So if you change that in-game in the UI or in the local console and um, this cfg uh, uh, config flag save is set, then um, on a clean exit of the client uh, without a crash or something, this will be persisted in your um, configuration in your tables folder. Um, and there is also the flag for client. So this is only used on the client side and you do not have the player name command on the server side. Okay. And then the last argument being a description that shows up in the console. Um, this thing is some bit magic. So the flags work you should probably look into um, how bits work and this is a uh, like bitwise or it combines those two flags. Usually you have those enums in um, potentials of two, like multiples of two, like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. And um, those are like, yeah, this is some binary magic, all right? Just know that if you have those um, multiple of two um, enums or like, uh, yeah, those are enums. I did not really explain enums. Those are constant values, so to say. Everything that is uppercase usually is somewhat constant. Um, so um, those two values get magically, bit magically set together, and then those both flags are activated. Um, yeah, so just see it, this um, bitwise or as a combination of those two flags. Um, but yeah, as I said, you should probably look into um, C and C++ bitwise uh, uh, bit manipulation and things like that. Okay, so um, then we have the type integer. So we looked at the string and there's also the um, integer. Let's look at one with a, yeah. Okay, let's look at outer screenshots. Okay, so um, again, we have the, the name that is used in the code, the name that is used in the in actual co um, config, like if you type it in-game or in your settings. Then you have um, the, uh, how is it? Yeah, first is the default value. So same as the string, name is t being default. We do not have a size of the integer. We have um, only the default. Like we do not have the length of the uh, integer, but we have the border. So if you go back here, the first one being the default, and then we have the minimum value and the maximum value. So if you type in serial auto screenshot max and then um, minus 2222 billion, right? And um, it will automatically snap to the lowest border being zero. So if you type in that into your console, it will set it to zero because this is the lowest possible value. Same, if you remove the minus, it will set it to 1000 because this is the um, highest possible number. And by default, it's set to 10. Okay, so this is how this format works. Um, okay, yeah, and of course we have the config flag client and config flag uh, server. And we can also set both of them. Then the server and the client has them. So for example, we have the password um, on the server side being the password that uh, users have to type in to connect to the server. And on the client side, it's the password that you typed in last to connect to a server. So it remembers your um, password. That's why it's on the client side as well. Okay, so um, yeah, let's Let's go and create one. Um, let's do it in uh, config variables. And uh, I usually just copy 
what is there and uh, then adjust uh, it to my needs. So let's copy the password line and create one for the client and the server at the same time. So we keep the config flag client, config flag server and um, our test config. And we call it um, test config and test config. And it will be a string, yes. So we keep it as a string and we have it like huge. And nice default value is our default value. Okay, so let's see if that compiles fine. Oh, wait, I should probably stop compiling here and press F7 in here. Okay, that worked fine. So we can launch the client um, to be a little bit more. Uh, yeah, diversive here and do some client modifications. And then we can type in test config. As you can see, it also um, suggests it here and to use tab key to auto complete it. And if we press space, we see our description here. And if we just press enter, we have our default value, nice default value. And we can change um, the value and type something else in here and then enter it again without arguments so we see the value and we can see it's the changed value uh, i don't know did we persist it um yeah so we have flag safe so if we cleanly quit the client and then um, start the client again then we have our changed value here it's saved right even if we close the client and if we hadn't um put the uh, config flag save, we can just remove that. It would uh, be the nice default value um, every time we restart the client or the server. Okay, um, cool. So we can use that all over the place. Mm. Depending on what you want to do, I do not have a special specific plan for those configurations. Um, so, Maybe do something in the server side. I don't know. Um, what can we do? Oh, we can put a welcome message in the in the server again. Okay, so let's go to game context and go to on client enter again and do a what we did in the in the first episode. Send chat and we have the server sending the message. It's chat. Uh, is there some send chat target? Uh, send chat target. Oh, okay. So that must be some function that is not in the vanilla code. Okay, that's sad. Uh, send chat. Um, okay, let's make it a broadcast because I do not want to bother with uh, um, messages only for one client. Um, so send broadcast and we have a text in here so with a buffer and the receiving client is the client ID that just connected then we define our buffer we had that in like basically every episode already and then we format our buffer um, size of the buffer and then the format pattern and we put in here um, okay that probably doesn't make sense <laughs> Uh, we could use a string copy instead or if we okay let's say test config and then we put it in quotes so it makes a little bit sense okay so back in the days um, if you are still writing um, ddnet 7 code I think ddnet 7 currently has this and tl 0.6 still uses that um, you type in g underscore config point M underscore and then the name you specified here so test config um, so this M underscore is created by this macro magic so you don't have to provide it in here and then it will access your um, config so this is the old uh, style of doing it this is how it was like for decades but lately it changed in the vanilla uh, code base uh, but I wanted to show you the old version since it's still widely spread. Um, so in case 
that doesn't work for you, you probably need the uh, a pointer pointing to the configuration objects and um, yeah, it's a little bit less global. Um, that was made to separate the configs, uh, configs from the server and the client. Um, so you can have, it was planned to have a client um, that can run a server inside and they wanted, um, they should have separate config systems. So this was a global variable which was defined everywhere. And uh, for the future, it is um, better to design it this way that you can have two config systems and two config objects um, and have, have them running separately, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, so let's search for config because I'm also new to the system. Okay, so there's usually um, some method defined um, which gives you a pointer so config and then parentheses and then you can use it like a pointer and it's defined um, here in game context.h if you control click it um, you could probably also um, use that directly but I guess it's better style to use the, uh, the function um, okay so let's go back to our test config and we replace that with config and it's not a dot anymore, it's a arrow. So back then it was one object, one fixed global object. And um, if you have a class and you instantiate a object, you access uh, the members with the dot syntax. Um, but now it's a um, pointer to a object, right? Not a, not a direct object anymore. So that's why it changed from a dot to a arrow syntax. Okay, so now that we can build our uh, server again, um, we can launch the server and a client. Okay, as you can see down here, we have a broadcast message, test config nice default value. And this uh, message uh, gets prompted or gets like displayed to everybody who joins the server. And if I change the test config to um, numbers and then I reconnect, you can see test config and then the big number. So we have a, a configurable welcome message that gets uh, broadcasted to every player that connects. Um, that's one way of using configs in the uh, in the server side. Let's do something in the client side. I, I should have probably planned that better. Um, so we probably will do something stupid. What can we change? Um, okay, so let's do something really crazy and just replace this um, settings text with a configuration. This does not make any sense at all, but I just want to show you something in the client side. Um, so we go to the code and then we search for settings in strings. Oh, and that's in thousand places. Oh, menus browser, entry settings. Uh, yeah, so this is probably the one that we want. Um, so instead of, so this local, oh yeah, diving into client side without any preparation is probably the worst idea. Um, but I just want to quickly show you that the configurations work in the client side the same way. Um, so we are in menus.cpp in source game client components, components menus cpp and there we are in the function render menu bar and in here you have all these strings that we saw in the menu we have game player server info and we want to replace settings with a configuration which does not make any sense at all but i'm sure um, in the later episodes of this uh, series i will make something more meaningful um, so you can probably close the video right now if you're not interested in useless stuff or client development Let's hope that we have a config method defined here and it is defined here. That's awesome. And then we can use um, our test config in here. Okay, great. Then we press F7 to compile. And it 
surprisingly worked. That's good. So um, then we launch the client. Yeah, we should probably have a server running. Um, yeah. Okay. So connect to the server, and as you can see, instead of settings, we have changed the value here. <laughs> um, so we can put in. Um, can we leave it open so you can see it uh, changing in the background? Test config foo, and it updates. Uh, just just in real time um, yeah I did uh, say it might be useless but uh, we have now a text from our client which is configurable um, yeah that's probably not the best way to to put it but um, yeah we did something on the client side um, cool I guess that's it for this episode let me quickly uh, look into here did we forget something? We had strings. We had, yeah, integers work um, work pretty much the same. And we will use those configuration values and uh, in later episodes for sure. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. That's some um, basic overview of uh, configuration um, variables. And we could just put this out of config underscore variables and put it into variables and it would work just the same just to want to let you know that those two exist but in the future variables might be removed as you can see here okay all right thanks for watching